Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm Van Hesser. I run KBRA's financial institutions and corporate ratings business. I'm joined today by Corinne Hill. Uh, Corinne joined us uh, about a year or so ago from 25 years on the buy side uh, at Alliance Bernstein, Rogue Global Partners, among others. Uh, a lot of that time was spent uh, covering the energy sector. Um, Corinne, you've, you've written your first piece uh, on the energy space and very timely given we're now entering another period of, of uh, commodity price volatility in the energy space. We took a very interesting approach, I thought, in taking a look back at the price collapse we saw back in 2014 and 15. And at that time, uh, a legacy rating agency uh, highlighted what it thought was fundamental and structural changes in the energy space, fundamental deterioration, and reacted with sweeping downgrades across the sector. You had a look back at that. Um, what did you find? Well, we wanted to test um, their theory that the industry's ability to ca generate cash flow was weakened. And we tested that conventional thinking. Um, and we believe that the fears were overblown, that the ability to generate cash flow has not weakened. And metrics actually uh, support the industry recovery. And also, equity and credit markets do as well. They confirm this. Right. So we, one of the things that, that at least with, with now 2020 hindsight, is there seems to be a range of, of both management behavior in terms of risk appetite, as well as, and, and again, to your point, picked up in, in, in markets. Um, is that what you found looking across the industry? Yes, there was a wide differentiation of risks across the industry. The industry is not just a clump of similar risk. We have to look at each individual company for their unique characteristics. Yeah, and do you think that there is this, this structural, fundamental deterioration in the energy space, the energy sector's uh, credit worthiness? Uh, no, we actually uh, sampled 80 companies and looked at their metrics and looked at their ability to generate cash flow and it has not weakened. In fact, it's on the way to recovery. Right, and, and you know, how was the industry, or what was the industry's ability to uh, attract new capital? I would think after the, the period that they had, uh, and again, if, if it was truly uh, fundamental and structural deterioration, they'd have a hard time attracting capital. What did you find? Well, some companies evolved. They learned from this credits, bad credit cycle, and they learn that they have to um, change when things change like this. They have to change quickly, have some agility. And as a result, they did changes so that they could thrive right. afterwards and, and, and attract capital. Yeah, and has the industry sort of gone back to, it, to at least some companies' previous ways and is behaving recklessly, or, or is there a more sobered approach to how they're, they're, they're approaching price volatility today? Well, I think the downturn weeded out a lot of those reckless strategies and reckless management teams. I think, though, there, is, there are still some reckless management teams that are still outspending cash flow. That will not go away. But I think what's different this time is that there are some companies that are taking a different approach and saying that they are going to spend within cash flow and not the reckless spending. Yeah, interesting. So one of the things that, that I liked in, in your report was using case studies. And it's always um, an easy way to sort of really put some meat on the bone. Um, talk about some of the case studies and, and some of the findings uh, out of those companies you looked at specifically. Well, we, look, we took a look at seven companies and we looked at their risk positioning going into the downturn, during the downturn, and coming out of it. And the, there was a wide range of outcomes, wide range of risk positioning as well. So we, we conclude from those that we're going to look for those companies that drive strategic change, that look for how am I going to manage through this turbulent time. I'm going to look at my financial risks. I'm going to look at my operational risk. And, and do it a little differently this time. Yeah, so one of the, the again, I keep hearing over and over again this theme that there is, there is differentiation in the sector. So does it make sense to sort of tar 
the industry with a broad brush, or is it really a, is the right way to look at the sector on a company by company basis, how they're positioned, what their risk appetite is, how they manage those risks? Yes, of course. There is a vast differentiation. Some management teams like to do things risk, uh, risky. Other managements are now more risk averse. We're, kind, we're trying to learn ourselves what kind of management team is going to be successful with this price volatility. And we've learned that there's going to be, price volatility is going to continue. There's geopolitical risks, there's OPEC risks, there's supply risks. And we want to learn, we want to watch management teams, you know, kind of learn to uh, operate in a low price environment by being prudent. Right. Sounds like the right approach. Um, take a look at Corinne's report available on our website. All you have to do is register, uh, pull down the report. I think you'll find it very interesting. Thanks, Corinne.